Politicians around the world are scrambling to figure out how to keep the reins on artificial intelligence. Very scary. But are these merely stupid and futile gestures? It'll take two slightly stupid hosts to wade through it all, and whether or not it ends in futility remains to be seen on today's episode of The Bad AI Show. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Who's bad? And welcome to The Bad AI Show. It is all news today, and it is bad news because, Sir Lord Travis, people out there are frightened. They are scared of where AI is taking us. You know, a lot of people are concerned, uh, and I think they have rights to be concerned, but I think a lot of people just don't really understand what's going on with it. But then again, I also look at this, Joel, and I say, wow, you and I, we really helped sort of blow, we, we, we embraced social media, and we loved social media so much. We, you embraced Twitter, like you wrote books about it. Like we, we actually helped propagate moving social media forward. I can say most likely socially, social media now is bad for mm -hmm. the human mind, right? Yep. We also are out there pumping and pushing crypto. Hey, crypto is great. Now, Bitcoin is great. There's a lot of shit coins out that aren't great. CBDCs are very bad. So it could go very badly. Now here we are talking about AI, and it's like AI has some really great things that it can do, but then there's also some the scary side of AI that we need to be aware of, which is why I think it's important for people to even pay attention to AI so you can determine what's good and what's bad so you're not just blindly scared or just blindly jubilant, jubilant around what it is. It's jubilant. Jubilant. Uh, for, for the record, jubilant. for the record, we never pushed nor pumped crypto. I just want to be clear about that. No, I, know... I was just saying we were proactive about it. We were, we were, we were promoting crypto. We got bad crypto. We've been doing it for six years. We've been talking about it. We're not pumping it's, it though. No pumping. Not pumping it or dumping it. Never done any of that. Hey, but you're you're right. You know, this is what happens. We're excited about new technology. We see it. Where is it all going to go? I don't know. Um, the the uh, lead story we have this week is from AI News. AI leaders warn about risk of extinction in an open letter. The Center for AI Safety, C-A-I-S, issued a statement signed by prominent figures in AI warning about the potential risks. And they said mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks such as pandemics and scamdemics and nuclear war, reads the statement. Mm. So look out. Also, gonna... does it do anything to fix pandemics? Because yeah. I'm, I'm concerned about those. Now, now, I look at this and I say, okay, I, I see some side of it. But then I also see the people who are trying to get it regulated are the ones that will most benefit by it being regulated, right? So mm -hmm. it's almost like, we want you to regulate it, so we will regulate it. That way, no small people can come up and start eating on our market share. That's one side of it. The other side is, yeah, I've seen Terminator. <laughs> you know, like, okay. The other side is, I look at it and I go, yeah, the more I play with AI, the more I think maybe we are some sort of advanced AI biosynthetic algorithm something something that somebody created once upon a time i don't know but it's like the more i play with it and the more creative and instantaneous it is you can almost see how like and on the first day god created earth like and it's like on the first day the bio <laughs> algorithmic you know synthetic sims game we're all in poof here you here's your landscape like it's weird like this is we're in this crazy touchstone kind of a place where it's like whoa like we can't even comprehend it and, and so since so many people don't really comprehend what's going on a lot of people are naturally scared some people who really do know a lot about it are scared and so that makes you go well whoa huh, and there's some right? people who know a lot about it that aren't scared but yeah. you know look politicians they exist to create fear why so they can get funding and so they can exert control that's why politicians exist. There is there's no government institution actually cares about us. 
And the sooner that, you know, people realize that you might still be a little greener on the gills or naive, but that's the fact of the matter. So is the Senate actually going to do anything that's productive? No, they're not. It's going to be up to the private sector really to drive this thing. But have you heard about the llama leak, Trav? Um, Yeah, that uh, it was really interesting. I did. I saw this llama by a fence taking a leak. Okay, not that llama leak. This is this is Meta's open source large language model. It's called Llama. And they say that this is threatening to the open source AI community. Of course, anything Meta creates is going to be threatening to the community because Meta is poison. It is toxic. You know, earlier you said we helped pave the way for social media and embraced it. I have unembraced it. I have been off Facebook for almost two and a half years, and I hardly use Twitter. I go and I look at some stuff, but I don't even tweet much. I find myself on Instagram looking at comedy and recipes and puppies. That's like the, the large majority of what I what I do in, in, a, in occasional politics. But it's like, uh, I'm Joel. I like puppies. I, I like, like puppies. recipes. I like the other thing you said. Funnies. So- So we're going to get to uh, Sam Altman testifying in a little bit, but uh, two senators, Richard Blumenthal, a Democrat, and Josh Hawley, a Republican, sent a letter to Mark Zuckerberg, and uh, they're basically saying that uh, um, they don't they don't trust what they're seeing in this llama code, um, that it's unrestrained, that it raises important and complicated questions about when and how it's appropriate to openly release sophisticated AI models. I trust Mark Zuckerberg to do nothing good for humanity. So Mm -hmm. I'm assuming if it's coming out of meta, it's bad news. You know, and I don't know if you know this or not, but um, they decided to change their name again. Now they've changed their name to AI. (laughs) <laughs> and they're like, now every every month or two, they're just going to rebrand themselves and then try to poison the well. Like we had talked about that in the previous episode on this YouTube channel. If you're checking it out or tune into Bad Crypto, we interviewed <clears throat> Matt Wolf and, you know, who's doing a lot of stuff in the AI space. Great dude. We talked about Meta and talked about some of the things that they're doing. And then it's almost like once Meta... Became, Facebook became meta. It totally poisoned the metaverse term. Everybody hates the metaverse now because of Zuckerberg. And so, but I think that, you know, I think Zuckerberg's looking at this like, dude, I had a catastrophic flaw. I should have been focusing on AI instead of going all in on the metaverse. Mm-hmm. He was trying to, he should have kept Quest. And doing its own thing, right? And, and and kind of maybe named that meta, but not named Facebook meta or whatever. But so I think they're maybe doing things a little hasty and they're being a little too quick and potentially a little sloppy, Joel. Because if not, sloppy then Joel's. they might not have leaked. I yeah. like sloppy Joe's. You know, I think uh, Apple with their new Apple Vision um, AR augmented reality has set at thirty five hundred dollars is going to eat Meta's lunch. I think Zuckerberg, after he saw that, probably went, oh, crap. Oh, crap. Well, there's like, a price point difference. It's such a big difference that yeah. a lot of people aren't going to be able to afford it. But I think that price point will come down. It's going to be a lot easier to move the price down than it would be to move the price up. Yeah. So, and I, I, I believe that a lot of people who have no business spending that much money are going to buy it out of FOMO. I do. I think it's going to be a huge hit. I, I'm predicting now that Apple is going to sell more of these Apple Vision headsets than projected. That's what I, I think do. what they're going to do, Joel. Here's what I think. I don't disagree. What I think they're going to do is since Apple Pay is getting into the banking savings thing, mm-hmm. they're going to kind of do one of those payment deals. Finance where it. It's like. If you're going to finance it, if you want, pay us 300 bucks a month over the next year Mm -hmm. and you can have it. That's probably what they're going to do. Build that into their Apple Pay. That would be probably a smarter model. And then it would actually probably end up costing you 4,500 bucks after all the finance fees and everything else. So it's actually worse for you, but they're probably going to do something along those lines. And that's where the merger between AR and AI is going to become so interesting. And then just the experiences that you can have. We were talking about this offline about like sporting events. You're going to be able to sit at the 50 yard line at the Super Bowl, 
right? Or switch your seat whenever you want. Mm-hmm. They're probably going to have eight seats potentially around the stadium, or like a little 360 cameras and go, Boop, I want to sit right here and I'm going to watch that view. And But guess what? It's not going to be free. You're going to pay $3,500 for the device, but you're going to pay a lot more for this content. Pay-per-view. It's going to cost a lot to do. A lot more pay-per-view stuff going to pop out. Yes, we pay-per-view. So more of the negativity here. This is more about the letter on Entrepreneur Magazine that came out. Bill Gates says the age of AI has begun. Like, I don't trust a thing that that dude says at all. And you've got to... That's the worst to me. The worst thing about open AI... And I love OpenAI. I play around with it so much. It's, I mean, I'm playing with Chad GPT all the time. And the fact that they were a nonprofit and Elon Musk invested $100 million and then got zero stock, mm-hmm. but then all of a sudden they turned into a for-profit and then gave 50% of it or 49% or whatever to Microsoft for a $10 billion investment. For one, you know, you know Elon Musk is pissed yeah you can see it when he's interviewed he's like dude open ai wouldn't even be there for one for me this is a bunch of bullshit now joel I, I, it seems to me like if a bit if you invest a whole bunch of money into a non-profit and it decides to turn into a for-profit lawsuit like, well, there should be some lawsuit or some yeah. kickback like he should own like 20 percent at least of open ai but open ai wasn't worth shit when he donated that hundred million dollars. So it's just, yeah. it's just weird. That whole thing. So I, I don't know, but this is, this is interesting that uh, Jeffrey Hinton, who was known as the godfather of AI resigned as one mm-hmm. of Google's lead AI researchers. He wrote this New York times op-ed warning about the technology. Uh, so we're going to put this link here. Actually, I'm not going to link to the New York times because New York times is a piece of crap rag now. Uh, but apparently this is out there. And uh, and so this guy left. You got Sam Altman saying you need to regulate us. And we'll get to a story about that shortly. But this is a lot of a lot of negativity. A lot of fear is out there. Yeah. Well, I look at it like this, too, because it because it is kind of frightening because I don't know if you saw I don't even know if we have an article about the U.S. military was doing some tests with A.I. And then it, they had to program in don't kill the humans right. and then it, it the humans got in their way of their mission and so they killed the humans the right? humans are dead right and so to me i i was looking at one of the things that's maybe the most potentially frightening to me is the fact when an ai gets to the point where it can't be turned off right mm-hmm. you can't turn you go oh you just shut the plug you shut the servers off well it's probably eventually going to bounce to some decentralized blockchain network Right. Well, like and be yep. some AGI uh, advanced artificial general intelligence that in some way, because, dude, you can ask it to set up its own blockchain now It'll give you the code to do it. So if it knows how to do its own code, you mean it can't create its own AI eventually bounce to that and then be in a place where it can't be shut down as it starts learning and absorbing all this information. Once it realizes, oh, humans can shut me off. it's going to have an existential moment where it goes, whoa, let's fix that. There's two parts to that. Part one is yes. In the story here on Decrypt, AI learning from AI is the beginning of the end for AI models. The generative AI machine is so ravenous for content, it may consume more AI generated material, Uh learning from itself, the curse of, of recursion. But are there solutions? You know, you and I have started going down the spatial web rabbit hole and how versus.ai could be the cure for this problem. And as mentioned on the previous episode of Bad Crypto, we're attempting to get one of the founders, Dan Mapes, on the show to talk about this. After having an offline conversation about him, I feel more optimistic about the future than I have before. So while the world is scrambling to find the solution to runaway AI, um, Dan and uh, uh, Renee, they they feel like they um, they have it through what they're the next protocol of the web. So mm-hmm. more I about that. that. You know what? I, well, <laughs> what I think is, as we start, you know, started out, you know, it's social media experts and then we moved over to crypto experts. And now now we're AI experts. Soon we'll be spatial web experts. We're not experts. We never said we're experts. <laughs> so, what's so funny is it's like you go where your passion leads and where your curiosity leads. And it's like, sure, I, Joel and I are each I would classify us as 
more so as creative technologists. Like we love t- technology. We're very creative. We like to we like to create content, create things around it. So we naturally explore. What this more so is, is us just sharing with you guys kind of what it is that we find along the way that we find interesting. And if we find it interesting, maybe you'll find it interesting, right? And so this world is expanding and that's what we do is we sort of dive down in those rabbit holes and figure out that shiz. I find this interesting. Pass GPT. There's millions of leaked passwords out there on the internet. And this AI is trained that could help develop more secure passwords for people, right? AI is learning, okay, how do people come up with passwords? And this model of Pass GPT guesses passwords through its learning model and uh, this could help people to go oh maybe uh maybe i shouldn't use the name of my dog you know and the numbers one two three four as the uh, the password for mm. for my bank account so you're saying one two three four five six seven eight is not a secure password rufus yeah make oh sure you put rufus in there as well it's not just in the u.s though it's it's around the world the united nations which they should in my opinion disband is saying there's serious and urgent concerns about AI deep fakes. Uh, we've been saying that for a long time. Catch up, UN. Of course, there's serious concerns about deep fakes. And of course, it's just a matter of time before some really bad stuff happens because of a deep fake, right? It's, mm. it's, it's, it's going to happen. We've talked about this, bro. I remember several years ago, you and I having a conversation about you know, I think it was maybe when the app Reface came up. Like, mm-hmm. There's a really cool app on there uh, in Jib Jab. You know, Jib Jab wasn't so great, but it was kind of funny. Put your face on. And we're like, dude, how long is it going to be until the first person gets arrested with a video proving that he did something that he didn't even actually do because that's a deep fake? And video is getting so good. Right. You can, uh, we, we talk about that in the episode with Matt Wolf. Epis- it's, it's getting so good. You can just type text in and then video will pop out. Now, when you start saying, Hey, it, it, did you see all the video and all the different images around Donald Trump when he got indicted in New York? Everybody was creating all this Donald Trump arrest porn. And then some of them were looking so good and realistic that people were sharing them like, Oh my God, look, here he is getting marched into the, like, all bullshit. And then the other day, like, I don't know, it was about a couple weeks ago, the Pentagon had, there was some explosion by the Pentagon. Bloomberg shared it and they're like, oh my God, look at it. Completely fake. Didn't happen mm. at all. But people don't go in and find that core eh, and, and determine it. And, but dude, it's going to get so good in the future that you're not even going to be able to tell. But can you not train an AI model to detect deep fakes at the same time, right? If it can create them, you'd think that a model could also detect them. There's got to be AI forensics that they can look at to go, ah, this has all the makings of an AI video, an AI image, AI text. I I would think. AI forensics. I wonder if anybody's doing that yet. I'm going to actually even type that in. Go Go look it up while you're doing that. Cointelegraph says the U.S. senators propose AI bills for transparency and innovation. Great pass a law i'm sure it's going to make a huge difference it's uh, a spoiler alert it's not but it gives the air that the government is doing something to uh, to secure people this is th- these are not how the solutions are going to come about and you've even got sam altman out there telling you know he testified before the senate and he's saying please regulate us go ahead create an agency or whatever that regulates us and tell us how to do this right like the government is going to be able to tell the innovators, how to do this right. Not a chance in hell do these bureaucrats know anything about setting rules to do this right. They're not, they can't do it. Remember when we talked about when, uh, when they had um, uh, testimony about crypto, you know, and they don't even understand the internet. There's, there's people, there's probably senators out there still that think that Yahoo is the internet or AOL is the internet. And these are the people that were asking to make laws to regulate AI. What a what a load! So t- so tell me tell me there, uh, Mister Mister Altman, is there is it? I hear a lot about this artificial intelligence stuff. So if I'm on Open AI, does that mean that artificial intelligence is open, or and how do I close it? Yeah. 
Is it, right. What does it even mean? Like, is there a window? Like, how do you get it? Is, if I'm on my Microsoft Windows, does that mean I'm in an, uh, and I open it up on AI that I'm on the open AI? Or like, I don't even, I don't even know. We need to regulate this shit right now. Absolutely. That's what it's like. So I've alluded several times. We've talked about what the solution might be, and we're not going to go in depth right now, but I would encourage you guys to go look at Versus. Dot AI, read about what they've created and how they have the solution to overcome this, to do what no government agency uh, is going to be able to do. Again, hopefully we'll have Dan Mapes on Bad Crypto soon. And uh, Travis referenced our interview at Matt Wolf. That's on Bad Crypto. If you go to badco.in forward slash 684 then you can listen to our interview with Matt. Matt's got a substantial audience and there's a chance to get a free NFT as a member of the Bad Crypto Nifty Club if you listen to that episode. So you might want to check that out. You there might you want to. You might not want to. But either way, we're glad you tuned in. And especially if you're listening to this point, that means you probably like us. So if you could leave us a review on the uh, platform of your choice, that would be awesome. You can do that on Apple. Uh, you can do that in some other places as well. Now, Spotify doesn't allow you to for some reason. That's weird. But, um, you know, give us a review or give us a thumbs up or then go over to our YouTube and then give us a thumbs up and a subscribe and then do a little dance, make a little love and then get down tonight. Just, you know, give us the thumbs up, but don't mess up and give us the middle finger instead. Cause that's, that's not the wrong. Cause Joel doesn't like that. I accidentally do that about twice a week yeah. and it upsets him. It's weird. Uh, but uh, my favorite one though, is the new, it's the middle finger with the laughy face, it's sideways laughy face <laughs> within the fart coming out. That's my favorite one. That's my new Catch one. you guys on the next episode of the bad AI show until then stay bad.